Hi, this is Database by Doug, and this is a brief video on some basic capabilities of the diagramming tool in SQL Server Management Studio. So the diagramming tool is there to help you uh, model databases. Uh, so let's say I have a, a database, and I'm going to create a new one here. And this database is going to have buildings and rooms in it. So there's my new database. It has nothing in it, no tables. And I can come here to the tables and right click and create a new table and get a more traditional designer of the table and begin typing things in here. But I don't get a very visual uh, idea of this. So I'm going to use the diagramming tool to do this. So when I first begin uh, doing a diagram, uh, it's going to ask me whether or not I want to have support for uh, diagramming in this database. So I'm going to say yes, I'd like that this database support diagramming. And furthermore, now I'm going to create a new database diagram by right clicking, saying new database diagram. So the first thing it does is ask me whether or not I want to add existing tables to the diagram. And there are no existing tables, so I'm just going to go ahead and close this. So I have this large open area. This is my palette upon which I can model my tables and create a schema for this database. So I'm going to begin just by right clicking in an empty space and creating a new table. It'll first ask me for the name of that table. I'm going to use building as the name. And now I can just begin typing in some basic information about each of its attributes. So I'm going to use uh, uh, standards that I normally use. So each of my tables typically has an ID of integer data type as a default. And I will not allow nulls. That will become the primary key. I will have a name for this table, or a name for each building. I'll make that variable character 100. I will have an acronym for the building. Uh, this will be a two-character acronym for each of the buildings. And just for fun, let's put the location of the building, and we'll use the geography data type. So here I have a building. Uh, table, the asterisk means that this has not yet been persisted to the database. So if I look in the tables, and if I refresh the tables, I won't see it there. So in order to have this persisted to the database, I need to click on Save. And it will ask me for a name for this diagram. So I will name it Full Model. In other words, it has the full model for the database in there. And now at this point, it has been persisted. There's no uh, asterisk there. But notice that I, I still don't see it here in my list of tables. So uh, this is a little quirk of the interface here. What I need to do is refresh. And there it is. There's my building table with the columns that I just created. Now let's do a second table. We create a, a room table now for rooms in these buildings. Again, I'll have an integer uh, for that. I'll put in the foreign key, the building ID, which will be an integer. I will uh, not allow nulls there. Uh, each room typically has a number. Unfortunately, in different buildings, uh, I, there are a number of different schemes, at least on my campus, for these. And I think they go up to five. So I will uh, not allow nulls there. Uh, let's have uh, a capacity. Let's make that a small integer. And how about number of exits? So notice as I'm, I'm going through here, I'm typing these. Um, but you can select each of the data types and then size it. And these are just giving me the basic um, basic information about each of the columns. There's much more that I could edit if I went in and edited each one individually. So again, this is saved. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And if I refresh the tables, 
I should see that I have both tables there. Now I haven't yet made these uh, created primary keys. So one of the things that I have here is in this diagram, I have a handle on each of these columns that I can select. So here I've selected the ID column in the building table. I will right click on it and set the primary key. Let me go ahead and save that. And furthermore, I'll do that in the room table. And I'll go ahead and save that. And it warns me each time, yes, you're about to change this table. Now, in order to make the relationship and enforce referential integrity between these two tables, I can highlight this ID uh, by the handle and drag it over here onto the room table, but I'm going to drag it directly onto the foreign key field. It drops there and immediately it, it realizes that the primary key field is the one that it has a unique identifier on it. And in the room table, that's the foreign key. If you drag onto the wrong column, you can change which column is selected on this. I'll say OK. A uh, number of different changes that you can make to the foreign key relationship. I'm going to leave it as the default. And now I see the relationship between these two tables. And I can go ahead and save this. Now, one of the things that I... Uh, that you might run into is let's say that I have a an acronym and now we're going to use three character acronyms and I'll go ahead and save that and you may encounter this it says saving changes is not permitted and in order to do this it would involve dropping and recreating this table so this is a safety feature built actually into the SQL language not just SQL management studio but um, changing certain columns will require that the whole table be recreated. So in other words, you drop the whole table and you uh, create a brand new table with the change. So if you are at design uh, stage, you may not want to uh, have this kind of a safety feature added on. So in order 